Good evening, students. Today, we are going to be talking about adding with integers. So remember, integers are those positive and negative whole values. Um, so make sure you update your table of contents. If this is your second time to watch the video, please take a moment to pause and set up your page like you see here on the screen. There is some stuff that is going to happen at the very bottom of the page. So I would section your page maybe about like two thirds, leave the bottom third uh, for some some words. We're going to write down some words down there. So don't take up your whole page with this, uh, this setup. Um, only take up about two thirds of your page with this setup. Go ahead and pause the video and do that. All right. So today we're going to talk about what happens when we add positive and negative whole numbers. So we know what happens when we add positive numbers together. Um, our values or our answers get bigger. Um, something else that's going to be really important while we do this is this idea of what's called a zero pair that we talked about in the absolute value and opposites video. So we talked about if a number is added to its opposite. So for example, negative one plus one it is going to be equivalent to zero. So what that means is anytime we have a negative value and we add a positive value, so if we have like negative, one negative and one positive, those combined, again, equate to zero. So let's look at some examples and talk about how do we add these numbers. So. We have um, an example up here, and I'm going to just zoom in so that way we can see these a little bit better. Um, we have the example negative three plus two. So as we kind of start off, I'm going to model it using what are called counters. So I'm going to model how many negatives and how many positives there are in this problem. And we're going to use this idea of zero pairs. So I have three negatives, one, two, three, and I have two positives negative three plus two, okay? And if I look at my negative and positive, I'm gonna look and see how many zero pairs do I have? How many can I cancel out? How many pairs can I cancel out because they make zero? Well, a negative and a positive make zero. So this essentially like cancels out to zero. A negative and a positive make zero. So again, this cancels out to zero. And then this negative doesn't have a positive match. So this amount right here, what's left over, is equivalent to our answer, which is gonna be negative one. Negative three plus two is negative one. If we were to kind of show you this on the number line, if somebody was at negative three, which is three units below zero, and if we were to add two, we're gonna go up the number line in the direction of the positives. When we add, remember, we're always trying to increase. So if we go up the number line two spots, we end up at negative one. So what I just showed you are two different ways to model the problem with the counters and with the number line. Let's look at another example. We have six plus negative four. So take a moment and you can do this along with me. You can pause the video if you want to see if you can do it on your own. Let's model how many positives and how many negatives we have in this problem. So you'll see I have six positives and now I need to draw four negatives. Okay, so I have six positives and four negatives. Let's cancel out our zero pairs. Here's a pair, here's a pair, here's a pair, here's a pair. So if we have four pairs that cancel out and make a zero pair and what's left over are two positives, right? We can't cancel these out because they're two positives. So the answer to negative four, plus six or six plus negative four is positive two. Now we don't have to write the positive sign. If a number doesn't have a symbol, we assume that it's positive, okay? If we model that on the number line, it is gonna look something like this. Now we are adding a negative. So instead of going up the number line, that negative actually means we need to go down the number line. So when we add a negative, we are gonna go down the number line, when we add negative four, instead of going up the number line four spots, we're gonna go down the number line four spots. So if we do that, one, two, three, four, we end up at, again, positive two. So negative, or I'm sorry, six plus negative four is going to be positive two. Okay, let's look at 
two more examples here. And again, we are going to be modeling. And if you weren't able to kind of see this clearly, um, when you, I had you set up the page at the start, you can go ahead and pause and kind of set it up. If you are good, let's continue to move on. So we have negative six plus negative five. So you'll notice um, both of our numbers are negative here, whereas before one of them was positive and one of them is negative. Again, I am going to model. So I have six negatives and five negatives. So essentially I have whatever six plus five is negatives. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I have all of these negatives here. Camera's getting a little blurry. There we go. Um, and I have no zero pairs to cancel out. So that means that all of these negatives, if I count up how many I have, I have negative 11, right? I have 11 negatives. So negative six plus negative five is negative 11. Um, again, when we add a negative, we're gonna go down our number line. So we're gonna go down five spots from negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we end up at negative 11. All right, let's look at the last one. This one has three numbers that are involved. So we have negative 10 plus negative one plus five. So let's model. I have 10 negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 going to label them all with negative symbols. I have another negative. I have one more negative. And then I have five positives. One, two, three, four, five. Plus, 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 plus. Okay, let's model and see how many zero pairs can I make? I can make this a zero pair, this a zero pair, this a zero pair, this and this. So there was five zero pairs that I could cancel. And what's left over is six negatives. So this is going to be negative six. Negative 10 plus negative one is essentially negative 11, right? I have 11 negatives. And then if I add five, I'm going to go um, back up the number line. And if we go up the number line five spots, we end up at negative six. So this was like adding five on the number line. Okay. So what it boils down to is these models can be helpful to see where we end up. I personally kind of like a vertical number line model because it helps me remember, you know, when we add, we typically always go up the number line, but when we add a negative, it means we do the opposite. We go down. Um, the counters help us kind of visualize like how many zero pairs can I take out and what's left over is going to be my answer. There's also two rules that kind of come about by looking at these examples. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the rules are and I want you to take a moment if this is the second time watching the video to pause and write down the rules and then we're going to talk about them. So take a moment to pause and write down the rules. Okay, so what happens when we add integers is that if the numbers have the same signs, meaning they're both positive or they're both negatives, the way to go about adding the integers is to just add the numbers. <clears throat> so like negative, or just like what we did up here, add six and five, um, and then keep the sign for the answer. So this was a negative six plus negative five. So that means it's gonna be six plus five, the negative version, so negative 11. Um, if the signs are different, meaning one of them is positive and one of them is negative, um, another way that you can do it if you don't want to model, because like if we had numbers that are like in the hundreds, we're not going to want to draw hundreds of little counters. We're not going to want to make a number line that goes from zero to 100, right? Here's a rule that you can follow. Um, what you can do is you can subtract the numbers. So just subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. And then the answer is going to be the sign of the number that has the greater absolute value. So the number that has the farther distance away from zero. So let me show you an example in the problem up here, okay? Another way that we could have solved this is we could have subtracted these two numbers. We could have done six minus four, which is two, right? <clears throat> And we want to look at these numbers and our answer is going to be whichever sign or whichever number has the bigger absolute value, whichever number is farther away from zero. 
six is farther away from zero and it's a positive zero. So that means our answer is also going to be a positive. So if we subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the number that's farther away from zero, that's another way to find the solution to our answer here. OK, so these are the rules again, add and keep the same sign if the numbers both have the same signs. If when you're adding integers, if there's different signs, you can subtract the numbers and then keep the sign of the number with the greater absolute value. OK, those of you that have just officially finished taking notes, here are your practice questions for today. And again, if you have any lingering questions, make sure you write them up at the top of the page. I will read them to you. Um, there are four practice questions today, okay? The first question is model and solve the problem negative five plus four plus negative two. So model means use either the counters or the number line to kind of model and show how someone could solve the problem. Then try solving the problem negative 130 plus 47. Then try solving negative 12 plus negative 17. And and then the last question is, looking at this problem here, negative 12 plus 15 plus 18 plus negative 20 plus negative 17, determine if the answer should be positive or negative. Determine if the answer should be positive or negative. That's all I want to know. If you want to solve it as well to just like figure out the answer, go for it. But I'm just looking for if you can determine if you think the answer is going to be positive or negative. Make sure you check your problems in the table of contents when you are done. And I hope everybody has an outstanding day.